All right, next up is the filter method. And this is a method that I use quite a lot in my day-to-day -day, uh, work. It's really useful and it's really simple to use. So let's just go ahead and talk about it. Basically, it's a function that you can call to filter out specific things, right? So what it's gonna do is you pass it a callback function and that callback function is going to return true or false for every element. And if it returns true, it's going to keep that element and return it inside the filter array. Otherwise, it's going to filter it out. So again, this returns a new array of elements that pass the filter, aka pass is the same as when the callback returns true. It will not modify the original array. And the callback takes some additional arguments if you wanted the, for instance, the index of what element you're looking at, or if you wanted a reference to the original array for whatever reason. Um, the second argument is the context, which we're not really gonna get into, but if you want to overwrite what the this context is, during your callback, you can do that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and look at some examples of how the filter will work. All right, so right here we have an array of four elements, one, two, 10, and 11. And we want to just do a very simple filter to only grab the elements that are greater than five. So to do that with the filter method, what you have to do is provide it a callback. So if you're familiar with the ES6 fat arrow, you can simply just do, let's say, in fat arrow, and then create some type of predicate, which is going to return true or false based on how it evaluates. So in our case, we want to filter out all the elements that are greater than five. So we could do in is greater than five. So when we run this code, basically what's going to happen is it's going to step through every single element of the array. So we're going to start at one and we're going to check is one greater than five. And if it is, it's going to keep track of that element and put it into a new array, which is going to be returned by the filter. Otherwise, we just continue on. So in this case, one is not greater than the five. So we move on to index one, which is the element of two. So at this point we check is two greater than five, it's not, so we move on to the next one. Finally we get to an element which is greater than five, which is 10. So we know that 10 is going to be returned in our new array, so we'll keep track of that one. I accidentally deleted a little bit too much, so let me just add that back really quick. And then finally, we're going to get to the last one, which is 11. Following the same process, is 11 greater than 5? It is, so we're going to keep track of that one too. So these two elements, 10 and 11, are going to be returned in our filter. So let's go ahead and move over to the JSBin and just kind of visualize that with JavaScript. So right here, we have the exact same array, 1, 2, 10, and 11. And we're passing a callback function which is going to do the exact same thing. So give me everything that is greater than five. So after running this, notice that back, notice that we get back a filtered object, which has an array of 10 and 11. And if we wanted to print out the original array as well, I'll just do that right underneath. Notice that the original array is not affected in any way. All right, so the second thing I kind of want to demonstrate is how do you use those additional arguments that are passed to your callback? If you remember, the callback takes three additional arguments. We have the element, the index, and then a reference to the original array. Sometimes you actually want to keep track of the index that you're looking at, not just the element itself, right? So in this case, if we loop over this array A, B, C, and D, sometimes we want to know if we're at index one or two during this filter callback method. So what we want to do in this example is I want to filter out all the even indexes. So basically what I'm looking for is I want my filter to ultimately give me back index 0, index 2, index 4, index 6, index 8, etc. So all the even indices. So to do that, if you're familiar with ES6 fat arrow notation, of course, we can just simply just pass in in, which is going to represent the character. Um, in fact, let me just do C so it makes more sense that it's a character we're looking at. 
and then i is going to be our second argument which is going to represent our index and of course if you're doing multiple arguments or more than one argument with es6 fat arrows you need to make sure you have the parentheses or it won't work um but moving on let's just go ahead and write this out so basically to find out if we're looking at an even index you have to use the modulo operator and basically you just do i mod 2 to determine if it's even or odd and if that index is indeed even it should be equal to 0 after doing that mod 2 operation cool so let's run through this code really quick and try to figure out what is going on so first step is we're going to be at looking at index 0 which the element is going to be a for character and then i is going to be 0 for the index right so we're going to go over here and check is 0 mod 2 equal to 0. And in this case, it is. So we're going to keep track of that element because it passed our filter callback. So this one's good. And then we move on to the next index where we're looking at character B. So B, and this is going to be 1. We're going to check to see if the callback returns true. So 1 mod 2 is equal to 0. That is not true. So we're going to just go ahead and move on to the next element where we're looking at C, which is index 2. We say is 2 mod 2 equal to 0. It is. So we can just keep track of this element. And then we move on to the last one, which is going to be D. And again, 3 mod 2. Let's write this out for consistency. We're looking at D and 3. 3 mod 2 is equal to 1, so this is going to not evaluate the true. So Ultimately, after this filter method is done running, we're going to have an array which is going to have the elements A and C in it. So let's look at that in JavaScript. If we go back to our JavaScript JS bin, you can see I have our filter method being passed a callback where we have um, N and I. In fact, let me change that to C. And of course, we just do I mod 2 is equal to 0 to get back those even indices. So notice after running this, we get back A and C as our filtered array. And that is exactly what we just demonstrated inside of this walking through of the logic. Awesome. So that pretty much wraps up this filtered tutorial.